Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to another edition of the MBA Journey, Making It Happen with Fortuna Admissions. And I have with me Caroline Diarty Edwards, co-founder of Fortuna and the former admissions director at NCOD. We're going to talk about how do you apply if you are a management consultant? Uh, the good news, uh, you have a lot of company. The bad news, you have a lot of company. You're in one of the most overpopulated parts of the elite applicant pool. So, Caroline, what do you do to stand out? Right. So, um, to stand out, I mean, there are three key things that I think you need to bear in mind. Um, first of all, you know, don't explain the nuts and bolts of what you do. As you said, there are a lot of people applying to business school with this credential, and the far reader is very familiar with the type of work that you're doing on a daily basis. Mm. So, don't waste, you know, valuable real estate in your application explaining. Um, your tasks. Really focus on the impact that you've had. So you need to get to that very quickly. Um, secondly, you know, think about how you can showcase a project that's different from what your peers may have done. And you know, in in um, approaching this, it's good if you're thinking about this way in advance because it may be that you need to put your hand up and volunteer for a project that might be a bit out of the ordinary. And that's not something you can do, you know, six weeks before the application deadline. True. So it's good if you're thinking about this, you know, a year or even two years beforehand, mm -hmm. so you can plan your career and think about how you can do something that looks a bit different. Um, you know, in my case, I was actually a management consultant before I applied to business school. And, you know, one of the things that I talked about in my application, I was working um, in London in the media and telecoms practice of my firm. And um, so I set up a training program for our practice, um, sort of focusing on the industry. And that went very well. And then I rolled it out for the whole European practice. Oh, wow. So that was something that was, you know, a little bit unusual for a junior consultant. So that was something that, you know, gave me a great story to tell in my application. And it was also something that my recommender, one of my recommenders could talk about. Um, so, you know, plan ahead and think about what you can do that will make you look a little bit different from your peer group. Um, and, you know, also we've seen with our, you know, some of our recent clients applying to business school that, you know, for the very top, you know, most competitive programs, it can actually help to leave consulting before you go to business school and do something else. So we've had some successful clients, you know, going off to Harvard and Stanford who have, you know, worked at McKinsey, Bain, BCG, et cetera, you know, fantastic credential to have on your resume, but then they've gone and done something else. Maybe they've shifted to private equity or they're going to do, mm -hmm. you know, non-profit management in an emerging economy, you know, something quite different to, to just, you know, give them a different edge and show that they're bringing something else to the classroom. Um, so that differentiation of your experience is, is very important. And this is really competitive and it gets down to GMAT scores. Right. right? Yes. So... You know, if you look at the, the, the average GMAT for the schools that you're targeting, you know, it's probably quite eye-watering already, as you know. You know, they seem to have crept up a little bit every year. Mm -hmm. um, but the average GMAT of the management consultants on that program probably is about 10 to 20 points higher Ouch. than the average for the student body as a whole. Mm. So, um, you know, management consultants have great analytical abilities and right. they often apply a bit earlier than, than other candidates. So... You know, they're normally very good test takers mm -hmm. um, and you need to show that, you know, you've jumped through that hoop as well. So if your GMAT is not at least to the average um, for the score, if not above, then that will not be a competitive score. And just, you know, as a management consultant, you need to tick all of the boxes, ideally, right? So you need to have great academics, good professional experience and the extracurriculars, etc. So... Just be aware that, um, you know, just having been to a great undergraduate program and having a great GPA is not enough to demonstrate your academic ability. And what if you're not from MBB, as we call it, McKinsey, Bain, BCG? Are you at a disadvantage in the pool? No, not necessarily, because there are a lot of people applying from those firms, right? And the, 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 the schools are not going to have, you know, fill the classroom with MBB. So it's right. good to bring people from other firms um, who maybe have you know a, a niche and a different type of consulting so uh you know if it's a firm that's not as well known then you need to explain a bit more about um you know the firm why it's a great firm to work out you know work out the value of the experience that you bring um and um and so talk a bit more about that context than you would if you're an uh, mbb type candidate and you know i never knew you were a media consultant yeah. i think we need to talk <laughs> I can give you some advice. <laughs> Caroline, thank you. 
Okay, now if you're a management consultant, you kind of have an idea of what it will take to get into a great school. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Thanks for watching the MBA adventure, making it happen with Fortuna Admissions.